Okay, guys. Hello. My name is Ariana McGee. I work with the Center for Student Success. And I'm an odd person who loves time management. Like, who knew that someone would like that? I really don't like it, just to be completely honest with you guys. But I've been able to see the, its importance over time and why it matters and how it contributes to um, our success. I don't know about you guys, but may not like time management, but I like being successful. So just like money and how we have to use that wisely, we should think of time in the same way that we think of money. So to do that, I don't know if you all are interested in paper trainers or the handle, like the handle, 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 Feel free to stop by the Center for Student Success in the library room 138 or Suite 138 rather at any time to pick up a planner. So that's just your happy for being here today and prioritizing your own time and trying to think about or learn more ways about what you can do with your time management. Nine times out of 10, what I found <clears throat> is that there are two problems that we encounter with time management. It's either the procrastination or prioritization. It's not that we're just deliberately not managing our time. We know what we should be doing, when we should be doing it, but it's about organizing those, those things, right? Sometimes even having the energy to do those things. I know me personally, if I'm not invested or if I don't like what I'm doing, it takes me even longer to get those things done. But knowing that I can use that same thing to go ahead and get it done earlier or sooner, right? Because we know that our motivation for that thing isn't going to change over time. So we'll kind of talk about practical pieces related to procrastination. Who in here for procrastinate? Just raise your hand. Okay, even if y'all like, that's everybody. You see, I raised my hand as well. We all have something in this room that we procrastinate towards. But what we'll find is that our reason for procrastinating, depending on the task, will differ. So what I want to do and what I hope that we do in this presentation today is begin thinking about why we procrastinate, because there's a reason, right? Sometimes we try to address the procrastination, but don't realize that that's a plant and we need to get to the root issue of how this plant has blossomed over time. So that is what I hope to talk to you all about today. So this is more of a conversation. I don't like presentation because that make it seem like I'm a professional and somewhat an expert in this area, but I'm not. Because like I said, time management changed. I work full time, I own my personal business, and I'm in school so I have a lot of things competing for my time and just when I get that one schedule that works for me what does it have to do change from semester to semester right you all know fall semester you get your flow you find out what's going on then you get a new schedule in the spring and everything changes maybe you had morning classes in the fall and now you have evening classes in the spring you have to learn how to manage and balance all of the other things you have going on for this major thing, class that's taking up your time. So what we'll talk about today is why we need to manage our time. What's its purpose? Why do we procrastinate? Again, get into the root issues of what it is that we do as it relates to procrastination. Not only that, how do and what should we prioritize? Like I said, what's a priority for me may not be for you and that's perfectly understandable, but we all must be aware of the things that we prioritize based on its importance, the way that we feel about it so we can know how to approach that among all the other things that we have to do. Strategies to use and other things to consider. So I'm a quote type of person. I always try to be deep and philosophical and things of that nature. So we have a quote here by Henry David Thoreau that says, it is not enough to be busy the question is, what are we busy about? You can be moving, but not be productive. Has anyone ever had that happen? You've worked on something for hours and hours and hours, and it still feels like you haven't gotten anything done, right? Because it's not just enough to be moving. We should be knowing, or we should know how we're moving. What do we want to accomplish? If you're sitting down to study and don't have a goal, you're probably not studying correctly. Because you may study things that you already know, or maybe studying things that may be irrelevant to the time. So this is about knowing what it is that you're doing so you're better able to execute those things. You know why sometimes it's hard to start a project from scratch? Anyone have any ideas or feedback? Friends um, online, feel free to get in the chat. chat. I'll be checking it periodically. If you all have any feedback, just wanna make sure you're included um, in this conversation as well. I did not try to do that. 
any feedback as to why it is so hard or why is it hard for maybe even some of you to start a task when you don't have any direction or you really don't even know what to do? What you got? You don't want to do it. Any other feedback of why it's sometimes so hard starting something? Anything. You could be a new habit. It could be an assignment. Anything. Okay, can you see? You got too many ideas trying to come through. Some things like that. Good deal. All valid reasons. All the more why we should manage our time. So we can know to the most, for the most part, what it is we should be doing and uh, um, to be able to develop some steps to help us get um, to those things. So why manage our time? It aids in academic achievement. Time is the main thing we have here in college and it's a lot of things competing for it, right? Some of you are in class, some of you are involved in leadership opportunities, some of you have work, some of you have families that you're providing for. So there are a lot of things that manage your time. And to be able to decide how I'm using my time based on what helps you be more successful, especially academically. Because we all know that you can't just show up to class in some classes now. You can't just show up and get a good grade, right? Sometimes you really have to learn how to plan time outside of that course. What time are you going to be able to read the course material that they're asking you to? And what times are you going to develop the papers or do the math problems that they're asking you all to do? So it allows you to plan and schedule. It also helps you <clears throat> to be able to refine your schedule also because let's say Bobby Joe comes up to you and they need a favor at 6 p.m. But you've already decided that this is the only time this week that I have enough time to study this science project. Because you've already thought about your time, when Bobby Joe comes to you, you won't feel guilty about saying no. That's been me in the past. I've had a lot of Bobby Joes come up ask me about random things at the last minute that they think is a priority for me simply because it is for them. But because I've already taken care of my priorities first, planned them, put them aside, put them on the schedule. Now I have no problem letting Bobby Joe know, hey, six o'clock I'm unavailable because I've already designated my time to do such and such. Has anyone ever felt overwhelmed? Like people are always asking you to do things and you're always showing up or things are always coming up. And you don't have time to do what it is you're supposed to do, then maybe because you're not planning or thinking about your plans before you respond to those people. That has been me in the past. I have plans. If you've ever come to my office, you'll see that I have a planner, I have a daily to do list, I have a separate notebook. I'm all about writing things down, right? <laughs> but I wasn't going back and checking those things. Sometimes I'll take on a commitment take on an additional appointment. I haven't even checked what it is that I've already obligated my time to, guys. And that's something that we should consider. I really want us, we're careful with our money. I, we might not be careful with it because I don't mean it's my own kids. But when it comes to money, we get a little more sensitive, right? If we're making money, we want to keep making it money, making money. And if we're losing money, we might be like, okay, I need to get a grip here. I don't have as many coins in the bank account as I thought. You want to consider your time the same way because it has the same value. Once time is gone, you might be able to get it back in another way, but you won't get it back in that original way, right? It's lost. You won't get it back. I don't care. That's how I feel. If I lose $2, I don't care if I'm going to get 5 back. I'm going to be like, man, I could have been 7 You know? So let's think about our time in that same way. Let's value our time like we value our money. In addition to that, you're able to gain skills that are transferable for employment. I hope all of you in here plan to get a job, right? And sometimes we as students, um, because I'm a student now, I've been a student before an undergrad in grad school, sometimes we struggle with how does he, this even matter? Like I have all these classes, I'm even taking courses that are not related to my core curriculum classes, or taking courses that are not related to my majors. Why is this even so? You want to be honest? Because that's how the real world works. I came in this position to talk to people, to help them be successful. But with that comes some things I really don't like to do, like doing assessments and doing surveys and all of those documentation oriented pieces. That comes with the job. I don't really like those things, but I realize that's something that I have to do in order to be successful, to be able to talk to people about their success. That's a component of it. So college, learning how to manage your time. These are some of the skills you get. Delegation. You are, we are not super women. Superman or Wonder Woman or anything like that. We don't have any superpowers. I have to tell myself daily, I am a human, not a robot. 
I have emotions. I am impacted by experiences, things of that nature. I have the best intent, but sometimes I have a bad day or sometimes some things are off. So when that's the case, time management, when Bobby Joe comes up to us asking us for that favor at 6 p.m., I, I may not be able to help him or you may not be able to help him. You may be able to assist him by sharing that task with someone else who may be available or sharing that task with someone else who's more um, qualified, per se, to do that for them. So you learn, you don't begin to bear all of those things by yourself. You learn how to pass out tasks when appropriate. Now, I'm not saying pass out everything that crosses your plate. Not those type of things, but in instances where you prioritize other things or you may not be well versed in the area, learning the art of delegation and finding people who may be more appropriate to do that task for people or assist people can um, help you with that. Independent. When you get a job, your employers would like to employ you for what it is they know that you can do. They don't want to sit over you all the time and have to make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to be doing it. If time management allows you to take ownership of your time, allows you to say, this is the amount of time I have. I work here every day, eight to five. And before I get here at eight, I tell myself what I'm doing. If y'all don't talk to yourself, that's okay. But I talk, answer, respond, all of those things to myself, okay? So I'm, when I'm getting over and brushing my teeth, I'm like, okay, we have this to do today. We have this to do today. We have this to do today. The reason why I tell myself those things is because it allows me to be independent. Because I, like I said, my bosses, my supervisors, they're not standing over me every day. They're not in my office with me every day. Your professors won't be in your study rooms with you every day, right? So you have to learn how to independently do things, how to independently set aside time. If you're one of those people who need directions and instructions all the time, I can be honest with you and say, everyone won't give you that. You can get into a job sometimes or even a course and the professor says, here's this project and you have such and such time to do it. The time, you still have the same amount of time, but how you use that time is completely dependent on what are you going to do? Are you going to wait for that professor to tell you every step of the project? You could wait on that, but nine times out of 10, they may not. Because why they're expecting you to be independent, you to decide what it is that works best for you. Initiative, you know how to get things done. Again, you don't have to be told. That is another thing. You, you, um, you will be seeing at least four years here in college to learn a specific discipline. What are some majors in the room or on the chat? Um, what are some of you guys' majors? Health sciences, marketing, nutrition in the D word that she just said. I always mess up on that one. <laughs> so each of you have different interests, right? And each of your employers, when they see that you obtained that bachelor degree from the University of Southern Mississippi, they are going to trust that you know that major, that you know everything that it is that you should know. So they're going to expect you to take initiative. What that means when you see a problem, you're able to rise to the occasion without telling, without someone telling you what to do. You can identify gaps, and you may not know the best approach are the most perfect approach to handling that situation, but you already have an idea, right? You have something to go into it with. Problem resolution, how to fix problems, how to intervene, sometimes how to improvise. I am big on plans, but I can tell you, 80% of my plans don't work. And for the other 20%, I'm improvising. I've planned enough, so that's the good thing about planning. When you have to improvise, it allows you to do something better as opposed to not knowing what you're going to do at all. If you know a model for what it's supposed to look like or what it should look like, in the instance that you encounter a difficulty, you can quickly or more quickly than you could without a plan kind of decide what's the best approach to work, right? Same thing with your time. Again, Bobby Joe is tea. You know you can't be there for Bobby Joe. But because you've already planned your day, or maybe because you're a plan or aware of other resources, you can quickly refer Bobby Joe to another plan or another resolution that may work better for his time, right? Self-motivation. You know what it is you're doing? I don't know about y'all, but it's like a deadline is motivated. Y'all know when the assessment or when the test, the paper is due at 1159, and then all of a sudden at 9 p.m., you got all the motivation in the world to get that thing done, right? I know that ain't, it's just me. It's so, so motivation, deadlines serve forensic science. Thank you for sharing, Azari. I'm just seeing that. 
So <clears throat> deadlines serve as motivation. So if you know that you have a test coming up, about Wednesday, your muscles get a little tense, right? You're like, okay, I need to study for this test. I don't know what's going on. So knowing that you've already set aside time to do that, knowing that you can go into your week, no, I have this test on Friday, but I've already set aside time to study on Tuesday and Thursday. It allows you to be more motivated to just rise to the occasion. It might, make, it might not make your study time easier. I'm not saying that, but it'll make, you easy, or it'll make it easier for you to transition into that as opposed to being like, I'm going to study when I get some time. Anybody ever say that? Do you study when you get some time and you say that? You want to know why? You didn't set aside any time to do so. I tell myself, oh, I'm just going to sleep for five minutes. Like I did have this schedule in five minutes turns into three hours. And then I feel bad, but it's simply because I already had a schedule and I didn't adhere to it. So one thing, when you're setting schedules, when you're managing time, make sure you're realistic, guys. We only got 24 hours. And I don't know about y'all, but I don't spend all 24 of my hours working. I'm a firm believer in advocate and rest. Schedule rest. I had to learn that the hard way. Schedule breaks. Schedule transition time. If you get out of class at 3 p.m., you should not be going to a meeting that starts at 3 p.m. Unless it's super convenient for you to do so. But maybe you need to have a 30-minute transition period. Maybe an hour sometimes, you know? Because you want to be realistic. It's just, we're thinking about things nine times out of 10 when we set our schedules. We're thinking about things that happen in the most ideal time. If everything work out right. Like I said, nine times out of 10, everything doesn't work out right. So we need to build in some contingency, a little wiggle room, you know, so we can breathe a bit. Outside of that, it gives you balance and ownership of your progress. You all are doing things and have done things today that I don't know anything about. Not bad stuff. Maybe you're so busy. <laughs> but good things, even not good things, maybe productive things. Some of you may have studied. Some may some of you may have reached out to a professor, check Canvas, begin working on a paper that's not due to a few weeks, right? No one knows that but you. So when people begin playing with you acting like you're not on your work, sometimes you can say, I've managed my time, I've done this already, or this is something that I've already achieved. You're better able to tell them how you use your time because you have a schedule to go back. So procrastination, what is it? We talk about it, we know it's not doing things on time and stuff like that. But I, like I said, I'm big on words, I'm big on phrases. So it's something about definitions that gets me. I'm looking at words all the time. So let's look at this. It says procrastination means deliberately delaying one's initiative. Now we just talked about that's one of the things that time management uses. Not only initiative, motivation. We talked about that with time management as well. The P word, progress. That word came up as well toward completing the task despite. So you deliberately ignore your initiative, your motivation, your progress, despite you knowing that this delay will be harmful to you. Let's let that marinate for a while. You know, meat is better when it marinates, you know? It says deliberately delaying one's initiative, motivation, our progress toward completing a task, knowing we already know before we do it that this is going to be harmful to us. So it's like knowing we have that paper due on Friday and then accepting that party invite we get for Thursday night, knowing we haven't even written the title page for the paper. Haven't even started the research. Don't even know the topic or anything like that. We deliberately do it. That's the thing with procrastination that I want you all to remember, if nothing else. It's deliberate. Does anyone hear what deliberate means? If not, that's perfectly understandable. Let us know. We'll let you know. Deliberate means on purpose. It's intentional. It's intentional. It's not on accident. Procrastination does not happen on accident. The definition says that it's deliberate. It says that you already know that this action and delaying your progress, delaying your initiative or motivation may be harmful to you. It's productivity suicide, guys. Procrastination is slowly killing your productivity. And you know it. We all know procrastination bad. They ain't stopping. Now one of us, a day in our life, we procrastinate, right? So it's not me. 
that's what you want to do with if you really want to be honest. So that's something to think about the next time you procrastinate. And I think this is empowering too, that you know it's your fault. We don't ever want to address the things that are our fault, but I think those are the most powerful things to address because I can't address your fault. Like that's on you. I can help you with it, but I can't, I can't address your fault. But I can take ownership of mine. Not only can I take ownership of it, I can change. So if we see that we're procrastinating, we know now moving forward, it should not be any confusion that we're causing it. We have, we're the cause and we're also the cure, right? So hopefully throughout some of our um, conversation <clears throat> a little bit later, you'll tap more into the cure and even get into your causing. What is causing you specifically to procrastinate? So procrastination warning, some things you should be aware about. It's a threat to your success. I don't think I would ask anybody in here what they want to be and they'll say unsuccessful. You may not even say successful, but whatever you say, I guarantee it's a definition for success for you. Some of us in here may have 4.0 goals. Some of us may have 2.75 goals. Then it doesn't matter. Both of those are successful. I don't ever, ever underestimate anyone's GPA goal, even if it's a 2.0, because if a 2.0 is your goal, that, is, that lets me know that it's progress for you. And it doesn't matter how low or small that progress is, it's all that it's about is that it's being made. But if you're not managing your time, progress can be made. You might win. You might make it at the, you know, those procrastination papers. They just did it. You think they did. You're like, dang, I did that. You know, I only did that a few hours and I got this good grade. But the quality of your work really isn't there. You, if you go back and review that work that you procrastinated on and just rushed it real quick, you probably made a lot of simple errors. Some things that you wouldn't have done if you would have just took your time. I'm not telling you to write one eight-page paper in a day. It can be done. I can attend to that, but it's not good for your mental health. But what I will advise you all to do is take that same eight-page paper, spread it off across four days. Your coach, I mean, your coach. Your professors give you syllabi in the beginning of the semester. For the most part, you already know that that syllabi is your contract with the professor. It basically says you are required to do all these things. These are my expectations. By the end of these course, this course, all these things should be completed. But we take that first week of class light, right? We just sit there, get the syllabi, we ready to go home because class don't get out early and things of that nature. We don't think about taking that syllabi and looking at the project. Thinking about what it'll tell and breaking it down into chunks. I'm, I'm a, I take my time with stuff. I think a lot. I got to process things. So I start building that into my time management skills. I can't. I could write that down eight page paper in a day, but it's best for me and all of the other things I have going on if I just dedicate a little time a day. And to be honest, it keeps you fresher that way. If I look at anything for more than three to five hours, depending on what it is. I see your head shaking. It's over with, right? So I noticed that I cannot go. If I do that five hour mark, I'm, I'm having a pretty good day. But max two to three hours is the most I can focus on something at one time. After that two to three hour gap, got to change lanes. There's nothing wrong with that if you prepare to change lanes and if you know that it's a consistent practice. It counters idea of happiness. And this makes me sad. Simply because going back to that definition of procrastination, we know these actions through procrastination are harmful to us. Now you may say, I mean, happiness is such a strong word. Procrastinating isn't going to make me happy. If you think about it, like we said, everyone wants to be successful. You may know that, okay, I'm not going to get an A on the test. But if you don't study at all, it may get you a BRC as opposed to a DRF. Oh, you don't want to see an F on your transcript. You know you don't want to go through the torture of missing a course or missing an assignment. But we put ourselves through that. We learn to deal with it. Oh, it'll be okay. I have my other grades. I feel the other grades reflect the same process from before, right? So it counters what it is that we want for ourselves. What makes us feel good? I don't know. I don't know. 
don't know about you guys, but even on those projects that I don't like in them courses, I don't like. If I make a good grade, I still feel good. I'm probably going to toot my horn even more because I didn't even like the class. It was even harder for me, right? Next, it's often viewed as a coping strategy. We're running from something. We don't want to do something like my friend over here. We haven't thought about things. We don't know how to start even. Too many ideas. So let's get into the reasons that we procrastinate. Do you all have any reasons um, that are not listed here before I, I begin? Fear of failure. If you know math is not my thing, I can be honest. I'm a words type of girl. I told you all, I like words, but numbers? No, I'm not going to so I can easily feel, man, I'll never be good at math. I'm just not good enough. So I'm not even going to do What's the point of even trying? I'm not going to be successful. Why bother? Anybody ever feel like that? You ain't got to nod your head if you do just say that. Get that feeling inside your chest. It's okay. Lack of motivation. Like my friend over here said, I just don't feel like it's pointless. I could be watching movies. I could be doing anything else, going out to eat. I could do all these. You're overwhelmed. You got too much going on. Play everywhere, productivity everywhere. You don't know if you're coming or going. Perfectionism. You want it perfect. You got humans, not robots. Robots, for the most part, get things perfect. Humans, we're built on error. Everything about us is an error. No solid process. We have ideas everywhere. But we don't have an approach. We don't have a plan. We don't have a strategy to getting all those things done. Does any of this is familiar to you? Again, does anyone have anything or a reason that they procrastinate? That's not up here. Are these reasons even valid? Do y'all do y'all see how this can help you procrastinate? Are you able to kind of go in your mind and think about a time you procrastinated on a project in the past and you can identify it was for one of these reasons? That's a good thing to know because now we know one, procrastination is intentional, it's deliberate. We are the cause and the cure. And two, we kind of know some of the reasons we procrastinate. So the next time you procrastinate, when you realize that you already know you have that test, you know that you have that paper and you're not properly prepared, before you get too deep, ask yourself why. What am I running from? Is it perfection? Do I know what I'm doing? Do I have a process? Am I scared of failing? Am I motivated? Am I distracted even? Sometimes we procrastinate because we're distracted. We don't know how to concentrate. We don't know how to tell. Concentration is like what telling people no. That's concentration. <laughs> because you're focused on what it is that you're doing and you prioritize what it is that you have for yourself. So these are some of the reasons we procrastinate. So again, I charge you all the next time that you see yourself procrastinating, are you thinking about procrastinating? Go to your why. Get to the root of that issue. Because when getting to the root, you can kind of identify what's your best game plan for moving forward. Because we can't stay here in procrastination. Why? Because we know it threatens our success. We won't be successful. We may not even be happy because we'll have, it'll be assignments now, but next year it'll be dreams. We have ideas in our minds. Maybe they can make us money or they can make us feel fulfilled. And we won't ever step into those things. Why? Because we're procrastinating. I do. So how to come procrastination, overcome procrastination, prioritization. What does that mean? The action or process of deciding. So this gives you power. Procrastination may be your beast, but prioritization is what gives you your power back. You have all of these things advocating or trying to take your time. Prioritization is saying, this is what I value. This is what I'm doing moving forward. This is what is of most importance to me. I had to learn how to prioritize yoga. I love yoga. And I thought it was one of those things that I could just do whenever. You know, it 
it didn't impact, you know, I had other more important things that I needed to work on. But I realized in working on those things so much, I didn't have an outlet. My body was super tense. I had thoughts that wouldn't start running through my mind. I wake up at 3 a.m. thinking about stuff like this for a presentation. Why? I should be sweet. So I had to learn that yoga is something, it may just be a hobby to someone else. It may just be some pointless physical exercise to someone else, but it had value to me. So I need to act like we talking about money, time and terms of money, right? I had to act like it had value. I had to say, oh no, this is my yoga time. Y'all know like your fancy jewelry or those nice things that have value to you at home. You don't want everybody touching. I had um my godmom made a um or my step grandmother rather she made a blanket um, for a friend. And when she passed, I would wear that on my bed or put that on my bed all the time. My friends knew that they had so much value to me. And when I had another friend who was cold and they came and took that. Blanket off my bed, my other friends like, nah, you only you gonna put that with you. Why? Because they knew it had value to me. Because I, I dedicated time to it. I put that aside. Even so, even much so, then now my friends were advocating for it as well. You want to know how I did that with my work skills? You remember I told you all I think a lot. I take time to think. I need time to process. I'm trying to put time on my calendar where it says that I'm busy, but it's think time for me. If that sounds crazy, it may be for you, but for me, it's necessary. I need time uninterrupted to think. Why? So when I can come up here, we talked about the technological problems we had getting up here. Because I had planned and thought processes through, I was able to kind of get some things done. Did I start on time? No. Had half of you all in the entire time, right? But because I planned and thought about these things and was able to connect with different people, we all came here. We all came on the court, right? So this is about identifying those things that are important to you. I'm going to leave the floor open, even the chat. What are some things that are important to you that you know? It may not be academic related. It may be family oriented. It may be social oriented, hobby oriented. But what are some things that are meaningful to, to you that you can identify that you need to spend more time doing? For myself, I noticed that I began to get too busy with my job and with school. I went to college taking off family members, some of my older family members. And I realized in this pandemic, life is very delicate, right? So I had to make an effort. No matter what it is that I have going on, yes, I have work. Yes, I have school. Yes, I have other goals that I'm trying to achieve. But every week, I need to allocate at least three hours talking to family. Does that take away from some other things? Yes. But it means that much to me. Does anyone else have some things in here that they, what you got? And that's why I said I prioritize red. But if you don't take care of yourself, your body will shut down on you. <laughs> it will shut down. So definitely, if you all, how many of you all, are y'all taking time for yourself? Do y'all playing me days or just have time by yourself alone? I love being alone. Now, I love people, I love talking and being among you all, but because I spend a lot of time alone, it helps me better in these social situations. If I'm around people every day, all day, y'all might not have too much to say because I'm all talked out, right? What are some other things I like that? And that's very important. Anything else that is important? Any other hobbies you all have or things you notice that because of school, because of different responsibilities, you laid it to the right side and it's important to you. No more feedback. Y'all don't have anything in place. So y'all just gonna work all day. What are some hobbies in the room? Anyone like crafting? Any sports or anything like that? What you doing in your free time? That's still self care. It is because you know what's your major again? Psychology. Psychology. So what type of shows do you like to watch on Netflix? News, suspenseful, psychological type stuff. That helps you might be in the classroom. You never know. It might reinforce one of those psychological concepts you learn in your class. Or if not, you just like it. What do you like to do? You like to dance or do you schedule time to dance or you just kind of do it in your free time when you got a good song going on or Okay. 
So have you noticed that? Have you felt like I haven't danced? I have there been times where like I haven't danced in a while. Or I haven't had time to. Mm hmm Right. Mm hmm Right. <laughs> Good. But at least you had some effort towards it, and hopefully, in your own way, it might not be a class, but hopefully, you can begin developing time to do that. Because that might be your outlet after a stressful day. Let me go home and bust a couple, you know, Impro 2 H count, get some steam on so I can come back fresh the next day, right? Anybody else with a hot day willing to share? Maybe something that you haven't mentioned? Okay, we might need to get you behind the mic and get you on the choreo. So what do you do? How do you prioritize singing, guys? When does when do you even do that? You always sing. <laughs> Outside of that, though, do you find that because you do it in chorus or things like that, does it get boring to you? Or you feel like this isn't what I want to do? Or Okay. And maybe that's the thing you like to sing, but sometimes you need to realize when you, you need to take a break, especially with family. They find you can find out you can do something like do that. You know, mm -hmm. like is this show and tell our family reunion, you know? So maybe it's even that prioritizing because you know I have I think so much. Maybe I need to back out of these way and things of that nature. We have basketball. Azaria, thanks for sharing. How do you prioritize basketball? Are you on any specialty leagues or do you play often um, with your friends or anything like that? How are you ensuring that you give time to basketball? And all of our hobbies, though, stated and unstated, we should prioritize them. We should give time to them. Even if we're making money off of them, even if all of our friends and family say they're pointless, but they serve as an outlet, right, to help us get some of the other things done that are on our schedule. Mm hmm don't do your thing. It's all good. Uh-huh. Uh-uh. As long as you filled out that form, if you're here for um to get credit for a session, just make sure you go back and fill out the my form. If you haven't done that. Oh, you probably didn't know. Okay, let me write your name. If you would you mind writing and just leaving it on a piece of paper back there for me? Thank you. So the three eyes are prioritized. You can't spell prioritize without the three eyes. Listen to me, okay? So what those three eyes are, number one is immediacy. This is the way in which you should kind of <clears throat> envision our possible, our possible process for you to identify what it is and how you should prioritize. So those things that require your attention right now, time You want to go ahead and get that out the way, right? Because the longer you wait, that could be impacting someone else's thing, right? Sometimes what it is we're required to do on a project is one small part or one even big part that has to be passed for them to do their part, so on and so forth. So if you know that something requires your immediate attention, and I would say within a week or a couple of days, that should be at the um, top of your priority list, right? Just to make sure we're able to get that thing done as quickly. If it's important, that could be to you, that could be to a family member, however you want to important, right? What's immediate to you may not be immediate to me. Same thing with important. What's important to me may not be important to you. But we should identify those things that are important because after those things that are immediate, you instantly need to go into those things that are important. Lastly, interest. Talk about hobbies. Hobbies are important. I don't encourage you all to work, 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 work. I want you all to work, play, and rest. Get you a balance, right? So identify those things you're interested in. Those things you're already doing or maybe those things that you're not doing that you would like to do. Let's say you have an interest in playing. Don't even know how to draw. Perfectly fine, but if you have that interest in painting and it won't stress you, you have to start dedicating or you should consider what areas or when can I dedicate time to. So these are the three hours of prioritize, and these are ways like <clears throat> three things that you can kind of use as a checklist to say where all the tasks that you have to do are complete in a day. Where do they fall on your list? Is it immediate? Is it important? Or is it an entry? If you see all of these words, they're alphabetical. They're in alphabetical order. So that's a way to kind of remember. What's immediate should come first. What's important should be the tidy in the middle. 
And what's of interest should be the bun on the bottom, okay? I like burgers. Maybe I'm a little hungry. So, interest. I know it may be, how do I know if I should be or shouldn't be? Because some interests you should do, they're good for you, and then there are some other interests you have that may be negative. So, if it's rewarding, you need to reach out. Reach out to other people to see what it is that you can do to make sure you can fit this in your schedule. Again, we talked about delegation. Maybe you need to delegate a task to someone else. Maybe you need to reach out to someone to see if they can assist you so you won't have to dedicate as much time. If it's rewarding, maybe you need to rearrange some things. What are on your schedule that you really don't like, that you can do without? Or what are some things that you've been giving a lot of your time to that you realize this doesn't need as much time to me or as much time for me as I originally anticipated? Reschedule. What are the things, again, outside of rearrange, maybe if you were studying in the morning, but that yoga class that you really didn't like early as I put in the morning, maybe I ch change my study time to at night. I have to reschedule some other things in addition to moving them around, giving them a solid place. But those interests that, that are distracting, that keep you away from your productivity, again, delegate. See who else you can give it to, because if it's distracting to you, nine times out of ten, someone else wants to do it. May not be you, may not be your immediate friends, but there's someone else that wants to do that. Like I said, I'm probably one of the only people. No, one of the only. I'm sure there are other people out there that like to talk about time management. <laughs> but to others, it's not that thing. That's why they ain't allowed to be here today. You have to sign up for these sessions within our office. Nobody here talking about time management. Me? I'm my other colleagues. Like, yeah, you go ahead because that ain't even my thing, right? So if you find that some of the things that you have that are interesting are a bit distracting, you can learn how to delegate those tasks to other people who may enjoy them more, right? Do it later. It's nothing wrong with doing it, but just don't do it when you're doing everything else. <laughs> if you're working on studying for eight to five and you find that you have an interest that distracted, there's distraction. Maybe you need to plan that thing from six to ten when it's not serving as a detriment to all the other things you have going on. Lastly, don't do it. If it's that deep, if it, it's going to affect you that badly, you probably shouldn't even have it on your radar, right? So if you see that some of your interests that you have are more of a distraction to you than they are rewarded, you may not need to do it. Again, that's in your power. That's the, that's the good thing or the empowering thing about prioritization. It's all on this, where the cause and the cure. So these are some time takeaways to prioritize. Some things that take away from our time that we should be considerate of, right? Going back to that immediacy, those things are time sensitive. You know it has a date. You know it has a deadline. There are some assignments that are perfected that can happen whenever we want to, right? But then there are others that have a specific date. They have a specific time. So if you know that it's time sensitive, pretty, pretty high on your radar. If it takes time, for me, developing a paper takes time. If you don't like math, doing your math homework may take time. If you have a speech that you're writing, developing that and public speaking isn't your thing, it may take time. That's not the reason for you to wait till the last minute. That's even more so the reason because sometimes we do that. Oh, I know that's going to take me a long time, so I'm going to do that later. Why are you going to do it later if you know it's going to take more time? I've said it before, you know, so that's why I'm challenging myself. I probably will say it again if I'm being very, very honest. But because we have this knowledge now, we can do that. We can sit there and ask ourselves, or if you talk to yourself, if not, I'll ask myself, what sense does that make, right? So if it takes time, we want to put that pretty high on our prioritization. Here we go. Takes motivation. You don't want to do it. You don't like it. It bothers you. It takes a lot out of you. We need to put that pretty high on our radar. Take people. This is about being considered, guys. If you know you got like Bobby Joe, if Bobby Joe Crane asking me about something that sticks, no. <laughs> simply put, no. If you know that what it is that you're doing, a project you're working on, an idea you have requires other people, the least you can do is give them a head start. Because what if they like? What if they procrastinate, right? Build in that contingency sign. Fine. Lastly, if it takes money, I don't know about you, but I have to, like I said, I manage my time like I manage my corn. And if I know that there are certain goals or certain things that I have to achieve that may require some money, do I have to pay a deposit? Do I have to pay a registration fee? Do I have to buy these books before I attend class? I need to get that pretty high. 
Because just like it's time, there's only so much of it saying the money as well. That also help you with budgeting, guys. Good budgeting tip there. <clears throat> so here are some things that will help you turn or help you get through your procrastination <clears throat> through prioritization. We have a lot of things going on, right? How do you all record y'all day to day? What, what time management practices are you all in? Planner. Planner. Anyone outside of a planner? Mm -hmm. Sticky notes, alarms, so electronic things as well. Okay, good deal. Create a running list of tasks. Always have a notebook with you. I record in my notes a lot. If I'm working, I write things down. Like I said, I have a planner, a to-do list, different notebooks, everything. Everything has a place for me. Record a, um, a running list. That allows you to be able to go back and check. Because sometimes I'm in meetings with students, I'm doing things like this, and I'm like, oh, I have to do this. But that doesn't mean it requires my attention right now. I just need to make a mental note. So when I'm having my think time, when I'm going back, reviewing my week, I can go back to that list and be like, okay, one, two, three, four. I know everything I need to do. I don't have to start from scratch, right? Organize the list based on the priorities. Again, what's of most importance to you? You should know your schedule before someone else does. There shouldn't be, you know, people should be able to ask. Um, I'm going to just call you Brenda. <laughs> Brenda, uh, I have this event for you at six. Can you be a part? No, I've already designated my time towards you. Prioritize those things that are based on <clears throat> or that are most important to you. Lastly, track and communicate progress. Go back to it. Uh, that, the reason why I like to write things down because I constantly come in contact with it. Nine times out of ten, I'm mess up writing, so I gotta cross it out, write it out, do it again. But as I flip through that notebook. And go to other pages, I'm unconsciously seeing all these other things I have to do. So it kind of makes those mental notes, right? So be able that you have, you don't have to do it on paper. You can do it in the different ways that you already use. But just make sure you're able to track and communicate your progress. Because like I said, the communication piece comes in handy because everyone doesn't know what you do. We may have five hours on a project and you may have only, you know, began thinking about the process with someone else has maybe began writing about it, but that doesn't take away the work you did from the work that they did, right? It's all about you knowing and having a, a method or a process to track that and then be able to communicate it to those who may need to know those things as well. And some strategies um, for prioritization, like we said, goal setting. Goal setting isn't just left to these big goals or these big ideas. That should be within your day-to-day -day life. Within your study session, if you sit down for a two-hour gap, you know that you're, be, you're studying before that two-hour gap, you should know at least what you're studying. Where are the gaps? Where should I be directing my attention? You shouldn't sit down right at that two, three-hour period trying to find what you're going to study because you know what you're going to do? You're going to use most of that two-hour period trying to find the material, and you're not going to have much um, time to study, right? That, has that happened to anyone before? Me all the time. And I'll sit there the first hour. I'm, I'm going to work on this project for hour and 30 minutes. First hour, I'm working, trying to figure out what's going on. I only got 30 minutes to work on the project. What can you really get done in 30 minutes with our semi-corporate email? So some things to think about there. Chunking, time boxing. Break it down, guys. Don't do it all at once. If you can avoid it, now if it's quick, and if you know you can get it done, but if you know it's a big feat, if you know it's a big project, if you know it'll take a lot of time, break that thing down. If it's an eight-page paper, maybe break it across two weeks, two days per week. If you want to do it more than that, maybe two hours for four days back to that. You know, find what works for you, but break it down. You don't have to do it all at once. Create a schedule. It's been so hard to do that for me lately. I'm being on schedules with the Mondays mixed up from the hurricane. And later today, but this week I am back. I am better. I'm creating a schedule. So I know for the most part <clears throat> where my time is going on a consistent basis. Yeah, some things don't come up all the time that are unexpected. But for the most part, I know where and what I'm doing each hour of the day. Schedule breaks. This is for yourself. This is between the days. You should not be working on going from one thing to the other like this. You might as well be a robot, and you can't be a robot. No matter, no matter how bad you like me, that's not a, a human. So make sure you're having time to 
break, decompress. Sometimes class can be hard. It's information overload. I heard someone's major was biomedical or some science like that. Imagine if you have a two hour course and you listen to all these words that you can't even say. You may need to take a break. Have a walk, play a video game, watch you on Netflix. Something to get your mind back at ease so you can be better prepared to do other things, right? And this is uh, the Eisenhower matrix. It's a way that you can kind of further break down deciding what you should do and what you shouldn't do. Here, <clears throat> you'll see not important and important right where it says you're, you are screen sharing above in the um, Zoom toolbox, it says urgent and non-urgent. So if it's important <clears throat> and urgent, you should do it. Going back to the immediate. If it's important, but non-urgent, you decide. So when should I do it? Is it today? Is it tomorrow? Is it later this week? If it's not important, if it's not important, but urgent, delegate. You know those tasks that we don't want to do, but we know they still need to get done. The ones that we can delegate some things again, as we know, we, we won't be able to get rid of. But the ones that we can, if it's not important, but still urgent for another piece of the process, or maybe for another person involved, delegate. But if it's not important and it's not Delete. They kind of go to those distractions we talked about, right? You know, it's not urgent, it's not important. No, you can, again, you can delegate. You have some other Ds we kind of talked about um, as it relates to that. You can delegate. Delete may be the last option, but for the most part, if you can identify that it's not important, nor is it urgent, it shouldn't be that high on your priority list. And for my out folks, my technologically advanced, here are several apps <clears throat> that help you with time management and organization. Feel free to do those. Even outside of that, what well, we have access to is USM staff and students. Microsoft Outlook, it helps us a lot. Calendar invites, giving us those 15 minute reminders, emails even. You are able to set up your calendar any way you want on um, Microsoft Outlook. So you can schedule meetings there. You can set time blocks where you'll be unavailable. You can be able to set reminders, all of those type of things. So if Outlook isn't getting it done for you and you're looking into some other apps that you would like, I know someone said something about alarms and notifications. Any of these apps are could be a good use um, for you as it relates to that. So to bring this thing all in, some things to consider, mindset matters, guys. If you go back to those reasons why we procrastinate thinking that, you know, we must be perfect, or thinking that we'll fail, or not <clears throat> being able to move forward with what it is that we'd like to do. We have to have it in our mind first. You may not have it all figured out. I never do. But what I tell myself is I can figure it out. I have something that I have access to that allow me to get over this. It may not be in the best situation. It may not happen exactly like I want to. But I have access to something. One of my um, favorite actresses and now authors, Cicely Tyson in her book, one of the things she said, you know, she was very deep. If I can draw breath into the universe, I have cancer. That's what she said. And that woman lived to, leave, to be 96 years old. So apparently she had a lot of breath and a lot of chances, right? So if Cicely Tyson, as old as she was, she was about 94, I believe, when she wrote her memoir, could say that as boldly as she did. If I can draw breath, everybody breathing in here, right? I really hope so, because y'all the most attentive dead people I ever seen, if that's the case. But as long as you can breathe, you have options, you have chances available to us. Again, that may not be what we want. That might be the least thing that we want to do, but at least we have them to our advantage to help us navigate those things, right? Get to the root of your procrastination. When you procrastinate, I don't want you to just sit there anymore. You can sit there. I'm a firm believer that you don't want to sit there. You can't sit there. You don't feel like doing it, feel that. If you think it's hard and you may not get the best grade, feel all of it. I want you to feel it. I don't want you to stay there. It, it may take you a day. I try to get myself two day limits to get over my feel. Get over my feel. Sometimes it takes me a little while. But for the most part, that's what I try to do. Sit with my feelings. Acknowledge what it is that I feel so I can be able to get over it, right? I can be able to identify the resources and support I have. So get to the root of your procrastination. 
when you feel yourself procrastinating, when you know, I ain't even gonna say when you feel, because everybody Definition of that is delivery. We know we're doing it. So when you know from this moment forward that you are procrastinating, get to the root of it. After you feel it for a while, why is this happening? What am I avoiding? Because that's as, us as humans, we always try to avoid hardship as much as we can. Some hardship, like if we are athletes and stuff like that, we wouldn't mind dancing. You probably don't have a few stretches, elbows, taking torso, all of that type of stuff. I might got a little lazy from watching you too much. All of those type of things. <laughs> but we still have to be able to identify the why. That why. What is it for us? And being able to do that allows us again to see what resources and support we have available to us. If it's failure, we need to start thinking about the things we do well, the things we have to our advantage to help us get over those things. If it's perfectionism, we need to be remember that I said we're humans and not robots, right? If it's motivation, we may have to realize that I may not want to do this, but it's necessary for my success, at least my partial temporary success is that, right? Identify your preferred working conditions. I'm a morning person. I meet many students, many people who are not out. It's not me. I need my full six, seven hours. By nine o'clock, my body shut down. So with that, that means I had to start getting up early because that's the time that I'm most productive. When things are settling at night, I am too. Five, six o'clock, I'm trying to either, you know, chill with my friends or decompress. I'm not trying to start another project. I'm tired, I'm gonna start projects all day. So identify what works for you. If you're not out, that's perfectly fine, but make sure you're using your morning wisely too. Because I have to think in the morning if I'm doing anything at night or the afternoon, it has to be task oriented, right? I have to work on these projects. You might be the opposite. So identify what works for you. Do you like open spaces? Me, I can't study in a uh, junky room. So my mind gonna do the same thing. Don't be junky. I'm gonna be looking at all the things I need to move, clean up and things of that nature. Some people like studying outside or reading outside. Some people like it dark. Identify what works for you. And if you identify something that don't work for you, you may not do it because you shouldn't keep doing it. Now, granted, there are sometimes, like I said, our schedules change from semester to semester, to semester with courses. So sometimes there may be some things you just don't want to do. You may not be a morning person, and the only class you need, um, or a specific class you need, is only available at 8 a.m. Not too much you can do that, right? But where you do have the power to exert, where you do have the power to kind of gauge and maneuver your schedule, identify the conditions that work best for you. And that way you can communicate that to other people, right? They know that's a part of your process, right? Lastly, there is no one size fits all approach. And that goes for us and us as a group. How you manage time looks differently from you and how y'all manage time looks differently from me. And how I manage my time today looks differently than it did yesterday, right? Time management is an ever evolving and ever changing process. So it's not when you find out that one thing that works for you, you can guarantee you may have to change it. You may have to reorient it as you go along. But this is a learning process. Time management is about evaluation. Identifying what works. It's not saying, oh, I'm going to study from 8 to 10 just because it sounds good, right? Especially if you are not out. You should be studying 8 to 10, not at home, if that's the best time to work for you, right? So be flexible with yourself. Give yourself or build that contingency time in so you can be flexible and be able to do all the things that you hope to do. Connect with us. Like I said, I love talking about time management, but I often talked about other success skills as well. So if you're struggling with work-life balance, if you need support with testing strategies, or just someone to talk to to hold you accountable. We have Facebook, Instagram, our website, and YouTube, this video will also be available on YouTube. So if you want to go back and review some things or just touch back on some points, you're more than welcome to catch that at a later date. But we love to talk to you all. We have success meetings that you can book through our website. It'll be the first link you see, make an appointment with us. And you can meet with any of us to talk about any success skills available. Or again, like I said, someone to check in with you, someone to kind of help you achieve your goals that you have set, or just to have some additional support here on campus, we're here for you. And I want to close with the same quote that I began with. Because it is not enough to be busy. The question is, what are we busy 
a balance. There are three eyes in prioritization, right? Immediacy, importance, and interest. I hope that all of you go home, go to your room, go to your respective wherever you shall be, and identify those three eyes that will help you prioritize. Thank you so much for coming to speak with me. If you have any questions, I'll be here a while. If you want to chat or anything like that. Again, for my friends that are online, thank you for attending today. If you'd like um, a planner from CSS, feel free to come see us in room 138, first floor of the library. I'll be ending this presentation. And if you need us, feel free to come see us in CSS. Thanks, guys.